The moment that no one is seriously waiting for is here. The Crapolite season finale. Episode 8 is out the door. It's in the can. It's in my hands. And I'm here to talk to you about it. Well, I'm actually not here in the studio. I pre-recorded this intro. When we go through the bumper, I'm going to be at a completely different location. Warped away. Still the same, yet not. Kind of like Star Wars. Hey, I recognize R2-D2, I recognize that Sith person, I recognize these locations, but this is not the same at all. Hopefully in my case, I'm able to still do a proper breakdown video even though I'm in a different state without the tech I have here and I'm able to entertain you all the same. Let's begin with another spoiler-filled Star Wars crap light episode breakdown. It's been a long time coming, folks, but we're at the end. Let's go. So as you can see from my surroundings, I am in fact not in my studio, but I'm in a hotel room. But I still had to get you the episode of the Crapolite recap out, so here we go. Before I get started though, please hit that subscribe button and make sure to like this video if you in fact liked it. Let's begin. We start this episode with Ocean Spray, engaging in an intense session of VR porn. She sees her sister May, hot, steamy. Speaking of May, Gimp Vader is very much interested in tracking her down, and even though he's butting heads with Osha, they decide they need each other in order to find her whereabouts. Meanwhile, May is being held captive by Soul. He starts crying, he pours his heart and his soul out to her. He's also about to drop a major bombshell on her about how they're not even identical twins or sisters at all. And so naturally, what May is going to do, like any rational person, is she's going to let her guard down for a sec. She's going to pump the brakes on the escape plan. She's going to hear this guy out. Uh, no, in actuality, she's going to escape right there on the spot, interrupting his big reveal. Rocket Raccoon's inbred cousin makes a couple brief appearances here. After a riveting chase around two corridors, May jumps into an escape pod and says this. See you in hell, Jedi. So brave. So edgy. So Star Wars. What we have here, folks, and I'm going to have to really lay this on a bit more subtly than usual, is a strong female lead. Because I'm in a hotel room, it's about time. She gets away uh, because Soul's a dipshit. Title card drops the beat. We have a chase scene through an asteroid belt made of glass or something. I don't know. This little shrapnel's flying around. Doesn't seem to really do anything to the ships at all. Sounds and looks a bit cool. This isn't bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. I'm in. That piece of shit muskrat thing starts damaging the ship, causing Soul to spin out of control. Actually, both parties start drifting wildly off course. Since the ships and the Acolyte are indestructible, she skips off the planet like me throwing a flat rock off the water. It's a nice gentle hop, skip and a jump to a landing. Nobody's hurt. Ship's barely even damaged. It's perfect. Now on croissant sandwich. Martian Manhunter is informed by Butthead that the Senator is waiting to chat with her. She's not thrilled. He's not a fan of the Jedi either. And they're, as he would put it, cultish behavior. He's sick and tired of the pageantry, the boat parades, the make Jedi great again slogans. He's had enough. Back on Unknown Planet, we move past the alien bird merchandise into birds of a different feather. Lovebirds, that is. That was a stretch. We got there. Mose Eisley Miller tries to convince Osha she should be trained by him, like her sister. And she informs him for the 80th time that she ain't her sister. But you know what, I'm kind of starting to think she literally is her sister and that they're one in the same. Because as we all know, there's the power of one, the power of two, the power of many. They head out, but there appears to be someone else hiding in the shadows behind some rocks. Peekaboo. <laughs> I wonder who that is. Genuinely wonder who that is. We're not going to go back to it. I can't wait for this to be over. On Flintstone's Bedrock Planet. Master Squid Games is mulling about, probably trying to figure out how he's managed to stay alive as long as he has, considering he's easily the most incompetent trash Jedi around. It's also unclear to me as to why he didn't punish, scold, or imprison that fugly beaver mechanic thing, but I guess he just moved on. Forgive and forget, or something. Martian Manhater informs Butthead to round up some Jedi Knights. I guess that's what they're calling themselves, even though they can't seem to muster up any sort of force abilities outside of opening doors. 
because they're suiting up for another confrontation, short for confrontation, on Brendock. <laughs> because it went so well last time, when almost all of them died. So it was back where it all started. That damn catwalk, that pesky catwalk that managed to maybe kill me, even though it didn't, but he thought it did. So he was living with that guilt for many, many years, 16 years, as a matter of fact. He should really be thinking about, you know, I could have just force pushed these girls back like three feet and let the catwalk fall and then individually brought them over. I mean, I know he was on the spot. There was a lot going on. He is kind of an idiot, but still, there was better ways than trying to hold the bridge up. In fact, he didn't even need to force push the girls. There was plenty of time. He could have just said, hey, May, sweetie, Osha, why don't you guys just back up a few steps? A couple paces backwards, you'll be fine. And then I'll bring you over. Or you just, you just jump. He heel turns and leaves the place, not noticing that May was just underneath his feet, climbing up. Why, why does she always do these poses? She's always in this boss bitch, bad girl pose, but there's no audience. So she's doing it for herself. It's fantastic. May's now back in the room that she burned down with the candelabra. This show really wants to remind us of the worst episode of Star Wars in history. It's truly a testament to the writing here. And now I know why she's constantly waking up with a stir because she's had countless sleepless nights racking her brain trying to figure out how stone is flammable how this entire compound was taken out by a simple matchstick walls are stone floor is stone ceiling you guessed it stone since everyone in star wars can hack and hotwire pretty much anything the script needs them to osha is able to get the doors open pretty quick soul after yelling out may for the 18th time draws attention from the wrong party Gimp Vader enters the arena for a 1v1 showdown. A bro-down. Listen, I know it's fun to hate on this dumpster fire of a show, but if something's actually done well, or at least in my opinion, fun to watch, I'm gonna give it a shout out. It's been a long time for this show, but I truly think that this Jedi fight scene's pretty fun. It's cool. It's got some Matrix style stuff going on. We got dual sabers happening force pushing, and the music woke up a little bit. It's still not great, but the music is at least helping a bit here. Plus, Soul, for the first time ever, seems kind of cool as a Jedi, and not just this whiny, mamby-pamby guy. Tia and Tamara finally reunite for a sister-sister showdown. May reveals to Osha what Osha could have learned a little while back, that Soul's responsible for Mom's death. Mm. Mm. That's got to sting. She gets pissed and they fight. She doesn't want to believe her sister. The music has finally awakened on the final episode of the show. We get some solid music. There is a lightsaber duel still in progress, but the Jedi clowns have now entered the arena as well. Holy shit balls! it looks like Master Squid Game 1. Cutting right through the hilt of Gimp Vader's lightsaber. It's over, Isley Miller. Pack it up. It's fucking over. Wait, what? May roly polies into the fray and grabs Soul's weapon. She's not going to use it though. No. She wants actual justice the right way through diplomacy. Soul admits to killing her mother. He does leave out the part that she turned into a scary smoke monster creature from Lost, so he really had no other choice because it was either that or get bodied by the creature. It is a bit odd that the girls are taken aback by the fact that they didn't get created by two mothers. That that never ra <laughs> that never raised any red flags. <laughs> like, how is that physically possible? And eh, we'll worry about it later. And so yeah, Ocean listens calmly as Master Soul breaks the news to her. He's going to try to comfort her as best as he can. Probably lay out in great detail why he had to do it what was going on with her mother, how there was confusion, how there was some distrust, how there was... No, she force chokes him to death. That's what happens here. And he's into it. He's like, yes, choke me, mom. Choke me, mother. He's like, hey, a tear? Take me down. Not that many episodes back, a different Jedi wanted to die. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm garbage. Take me out. This wasn't even a massive conspiracy. None of these people should have been Jedi to begin with. Their emotions always get in the way. Why do they even have this rule? What in the absolute fuck is this show? It's unbelievably hard to watch due to the frustrating nature of the writing here. Osha's lightsaber then turns from blue to red. 
signifying her complete transformation from hopeful Jedi to trash bag Sith. Oh God, the circus is in town. Look at these people. Look at these idiots. Martian Manhater senses Gim Vader, who foolishly took off his Magneto mask for a second. She is <laughs> stunned that he's still alive. What? How could this guy that single-handedly took out like six Jedi survived a couple of bugs in the forest? They were large bugs. How did he get out of this one unscathed? It's impossible. Even though she, that very night, killed one of them without even looking. Just no-scoped it. Back turned to it. The ultimate disrespectful kill. Oh my god, this woman. All she do She's opened up 20 doors in this show with the Force. It's all she does with the Force. She uses this amazing mystical ability on the most trivial of things. Wait, don't open that door. I got it. Wong. Oh, you have a can you need to open? Let me get it with the force. You want me to recline your seat? Force recline. The Knot sisters now escape in a tunnel below the bridge that broke. Turns out there was a tunnel there all along. It was like five feet down. If Sol would have just like stepped forward to the edge of the crevasse, he would have saw that it was like six feet deep. <laughs> It's like a Family Guy skit or or an old movie like The Naked Gun where the person's falling like, ah, and you think they're dead, but if you would have just stepped forward and looked, it's like the ground is right there. Classic soul. I'm glad he's dead. The sisters meet up at the tree from Avatar. Wait, are, are they about to make out? Okay. <laughs> the show just got a little bit, oh no, they're not. That was weird. Why did I even think that for a second? May and Osha are now in sync. Not the boy band, but that would be cool too. No, they're in agreement. They they hate the Jedi. The Jedi suck. I'm kind of with them. Uh, I'm, I'm championing the soul killing Jedi thing because they're so stupid. Apparently, Maz Eisley Miller has the power of Hermione Granger and can delete the memory of May, which he does in the span of like five seconds because the Jedi are right on their tail. And so May purposely gets herself captured. Martian Manhater spends the next several minutes throwing Soul under the bus, saying that he worked alone. And then one of the committee members is probably like, wait, he worked alone? You could say he went solo. Soul. We'll call him Soul from this point forth. And everybody's like, that was already his name. This isn't the prequel. May. It was nothing about the events that transpired. She's basically an eight-year-old trapped inside of, uh, I imagine, like a 30-some-year-old's body. And, um, and it works. Martian Manhater believes her. Back on Planet Unknown, our lovebirds, Osha and Gim Vader, who, yeah, I, they are actually lovebirds. This worked out. Are looking out at the sea together, basking in the sun, holding hands, and thinking to themselves about a brighter, more hopeful future. One, without the Jedi, of course. What are they looking at? How long did they stand silently there for? What happened to the pedo and the rocks behind them? These are all questions that we will not get answers for, unfortunately, before this wraps up. Oh goody, we have one more scene to close things out. Martian Manhater is walking into the room, chatting with someone off screen, and he's now coming in, and oh my god, is that Yoda? I am really trying to control my excitement right now. Um, I'm in a hotel, so I can't scream like I want to. Maybe I can do it in post, but just know that internally, I am absolutely giddy about this. I can't wait to see Yoda ruined. Uh, I can't wait to see this show single-handedly take down any sort of credibility that was left in Star Wars, if there even is any left intact. And yeah, now this is... Yeah, this is now the only way I can achieve Clyde. Well, there you have it, the end of The Acolyte. Season one, I imagine season two is just around the corner. Everybody's excited about this show. Everybody can't wait for more. Well, what adventures, what misadventures can we go on next with the the equivalent of a Mary Kate and Ashley TV show with some kind of uncomfortable, more adult stuff mixed in? This show's a mixed bag, shifting between complete dumpster fire to there could have been some promise here or there. Uh, clearly, there was some choreography for the lightsaber fights. I know. Every, everything's got to suck, right? Everything has to be horrible. Listen, I'm willing to say that some of it was okay. Some of it looked cool. Do I wish this show existed? No. Do I wish Disney made so many of these terrible disposable Star Wars shows? Absolutely not. Would I like them to take a beat, take a step back, maybe go to the drawing board and plan something out for the next few years that could be absolutely cool again? Yeah. Are they going to? No. They never will. And that's a shame.
because that's what we have now at Disney Star Wars. If you like this video, please subscribe and in fact, like the video. And if you want to hear more about Disney in general and my thoughts on this company and how they've fallen from grace over the years, please subscribe because I'm going to have a video shortly about that, about the theme parks, about the movie side of things, and the bad precedent that they're showing other companies moving forward. If you really like the content, check out my second channel, Adam Does Rants. It's pretty new. I'm posting a bunch of first world problem rant videos over there, hopefully to get a smile on your face. And if you want to put one on mine, I have a Patreon account at patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. You get perks there. At even a dollar, you get access to 300 exclusive videos and counting. We're well over that now, actually, because there's monthly vlogs. Those get doubled or tripled depending on your, uh, listen to the cars out here. I'm trying to do my outro and it's just, it's bedlam. It's chaos out here. You get my point. Hopefully I catch you next time. And may the force be female. Goodbye. The power of one. The power of two, the power of many.